Real estate, particularly office and multifamily properties, is not the only sector where problems are simmering they are here as well. This is also true in private equity. Private equity, private credit, and private credit companies are buzzwords these days. Providers would essentially go bankrupt if private lending providers were compelled to take equity. They are almost completely out of money. You know, in my opinion, you will start to hear a lot more about that. The number of bankruptcies is through the roof, too. However, news outlets are ignoring these. A gloomy view of the U.S. economy. For 2024 and 2025 persists among ARK Invest founder, CEOs, and CIO Kathy Wood, an urgent need for funds and security in the American financial markets was warned of by Wood in a post on the social media site X, similar to the early 1930s Great Depression. According to her, today's equity market panic is comparable in intensity to that of the early 1930s, when the Great Depression was at its worst. The market bottomed out and started rewarding risk-taking again after fear subsided. As the Federal Reserve strategy started to indicate much lower interest rates in the fourth quarter, the bull market and equity markets expanded considerably. The inverse is true for the first half of this year. More price deflation and reduced interest rates will, in our opinion, unwind coiled stocks. According to Wood, key market signals and economic indicators point to uncertain times ahead for the American economy and markets in the most recent episode of her monthly show, which was not televised. An indication that is Wood quite worried is the increasing frequency of store closures and bankruptcies, inflation, stagnating wages, and increased borrowing costs have led to the closure of thousands of brick-and-mortar retail and dining enterprises across the U.S. in the past few months. There will be 24% more shop closures in 2020-24 compared to the same period. In 2023, according to retail tracker CoreSight, even while several retailers have plans to expand, such as Dollar General and 7-Eleven, the number of new locations has decreased by 4% when compared to 2023, according to CoreSight. Wood expresses concern that, contrary to popular belief, there are warnings indications that the U.S. economy and markets could be about to enter a deep recession. This one turned out better than anticipated. This one turned out worse as I went through all of the economic statistics. Compared to the previous month, the ratio was over 4 to 1, indicating a considerable improvement, according to the employment report that was released today, among other. Headline data, the economy appears to be doing well. Once again, there was something for everyone in the employment report. Employment, non-farm payroll, 272,000 more people. A far more reasonable estimate would have been 180,000. That was greater than anticipated, however, somewhat less than. The previous month's revised total of 165. A total of 408,000 workers have lost their jobs in the home sector. What we're discovering as we go through the employment data is who is actually getting jobs. The good news is that immigrants from other countries are finding work. There are both legitimate and illegal ones. Americans who were born and raised here are the ones losing their employment. Now it's quite clear. Currently, there is a record high for the number of people employed internationally. The employment rate of native-born individuals is declining. Thus, we find that to be really intriguing. Additionally, the previous month's figure of 25,000 was also quite low. We now have a four-handle. On the unemployment rate, 4%. Keep in mind that it had been hovering around 3% until suddenly picking up steam and reaching 3%. We are now at 4%. I didn't anticipate that to be so. Bad. On the one hand, average hourly wages were 0.4% higher than predicted, which is great news for wage earners, but bad news for the Federal Reserve. Anticipated 0.3%. This time last month, it was only 0.2%. Perhaps it adds up to 0.3 on average, but it's still hotter than what the Fed would have you believe. The typical work week remained consistent. Private sessions were really ineffective. Indications like that are weak. I believe the Fed pays close attention to the temporary assistance market, although it has fallen 14,000 points this month and 12,000 points the preceding. So like the leading indicators, it has been trending downward for some time. It is my belief that this ongoing economic Downturn will have materialized into a full-blown recession earlier than the figures have been reflecting. When the dust settles and these statistics are revised as is customary after a year and particularly after five years. Thus, earnings reports also provide an explanation for that. Yes, there are certain reports detailing financial results. Impressive financial results. The earnings results for Walmart have. 
been excellent. Not only does Costco have horrible reviews, but so do the majority of other shops. Everything seems to be going swimmingly as these big numbers and stock reports pop up. It turns out that's not true, and margins are actually shrinking when you look at additional earnings reports. In our opinion, innovators will reap the benefits of that. Novel approaches address issues. Increased. Productivity and maximum profit margins are both within reach with the help of technology. From an innovation standpoint, the most noteworthy fiscal policy or legislative development is SAB 121. Along with FIT or FIT 21, legislation pertaining to cryptocurrency does, in fact, make its way through the House. Financial Innovation Technology 21 is an abbreviation for the 21st Century Act. President Biden exercised his veto power on the first one. Look at my notes, but he thought it was a bad way to limit the SEC's ability to regulate innovation like this, which is necessary to keep customers safe. With 76 votes in favor, FIT21 was approved by the House of Representatives. With the support of 21 Democrats, SAB 121 was able to pass in the House. Pay close attention to this. For many, voting for crypto or digital assets is now a one-issue ballot. The party's reluctance to vote for anything related to cryptocurrency shows that these Democrats have been listening. On the other side of the aisle, people like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders had significant impacts. Concurrently, former President Trump has pledged to support the freedom to self-custody in the digital asset realm while accepting Bitcoin donations. This proves that this is turning into an issue in the upcoming election, which is a major development. This is a major concern, especially among the younger generation. Now we are making headway. This is how the checks and balances of the three parts of government work. The executive branch, all right, one of these legislation was vetoed by President Biden. Additionally, the judicial branch has essentially told the SEC, you are out of line in multiple cases, most notably the Grayscale case, which of course introduced spot. Bitcoin ETFs. As these bills make their way through the House, which is part of the third body of government, we are keeping our attention on the subject and are glad that it is an election topic. The fate of the FIT21 Act is still up in the air in the Senate. A year of elections is upon us. Several Democrats are now casting their ballots in support of cryptocurrency, seeing the significance it holds for a considerable segment of the population. That concludes the most significant development pertaining to fiscal policy. Furthermore, while discussing fiscal policy, innovation is usually not brought up. Taxes, expenditure, and related topics are up for discussion. Plus, those are election campaign matters. However, we will delve deeper into those.